Kraft presents the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Al Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve each week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore, with music by Claude Sweet. Gildersleeve in just a moment. If you can't take all the time you'd like eating breakfast, well, the next best thing is to pack all the good nourishment you can into your first meal of the day. That's why it's so important for you to include a fine energy food like parquet margarine in every breakfast you eat. Parquet helps provide lots of pep and energy for a hard day's work, and it also contains an important vitamin essential to your daily diet. That vitamin is vitamin A. So every pound you buy has 9,000 units of vitamin A. So get off to a right start, a bright start each day with the help of delicious, nourishing parquet margarine. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet. And remember, parquet margarine is made by Kraft. Well, his old opponent, the mayor of Summerfield, has begun warming up his campaign for re-election, and his first political move was to oust our friend from his position as water commissioner. But was Gildersleeve downhearted? Well, yes, for a time, but then came a long-distance phone call from his old chum, Fibber McGee. Fibber, it seems, had a proposition. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, sounds very interesting, Fibber. Well, I'll be hearing from you then, huh? Much obliged, McGee. So long. <laughs> what is it, Unc? McGee and I are going to make a million dollars. Uncle, darling, you're not joking. Of course I'm not joking. A million dollars is nothing to joke about. A million dollars. A million dollars? That's more than I'm making a year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep this to yourself, Bertie, and all of you. Mom's the word on this, so we're ready to announce it. Yes, sir. How are you going to knock off the Unc? We're not going to knock it off, Leroy. <laughs> we're going into business, McGee and I. Well, what kind of business, Uncle Moore? Manufacturing. An invention of McGee's. Mr. McGee, an inventor? Oh, yes, McGee's a great tinkerer. And a smart little apple, too. He always was, and I always said so. What's he invented? Well, he couldn't tell me over the telephone. The patent is pending. But he's written me a letter all about it. He says it can't miss. Just think, a million dollars. Why, with a million? Yeah? Yeah? Will you buy me a bike now, will you, Uncle, will you? No, Leroy, I will not. I've told you time and again, bicycles cost money. Well, why not? After all, why not? Sure. I had a bicycle when I was your age. Oh, gee, I've got a super. Oh, <laughs> Leroy, you don't have to strangle me. Gee, thanks, I'm strangled. Now, now. I want you to understand, my boy. If I buy you this bicycle... Well, I'll take super care of it. And not leave it around where it'll get stolen. Oh, I promise. You'll have to study your music every day as soon as you get home from school. Oh, I will, yes, sir. That's right. Get me for kind of off music now. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, Marjorie, you've been very quiet, my dear. What do you think of your old uncle after all these years suddenly striking it rich? I was just thinking. Thinking about what? Do you think pink is too young for me? Pink? Pink what? For a dress. I was designing one in my mind, and I thought of pink net. But then I decided maybe it'd be too young. What do you think, Bertie? Oh, I like pink. Pink is mighty pretty. Funny. Last year I couldn't stand pink. Now all of a sudden I like it again. At least I think I do. I read somewhere that pink is coming back. Where's it been? <laughs> well, I think Mars looks better than yellow. Yellow? Yeah, you know that yellow suit of yours? I like that. Oh, but that's two years old. I don't care, I like it. You look pretty in that. Why, Leroy. I didn't think you ever even noticed. Nobody's better looking than you when you wear that suit. Leroy, oh, that's very sweet of you. All right, George, that's the way I like to hear you talk. 
Why can't you always be like that, you two, instead of picking fights with one another? Who picks fights? I never pick a fight. When Marge makes some crack, naturally, I'm going to eat a crack. Well, you usually do. I don't. Well, you you want to die. Die. No, children. <laughs> uh, getting back to the dress. Uh, why don't you go down to Hogan Brothers, my dear, and see what they've got? School will be starting next week. You probably need some clothes. Oh, but uh, what I had in mind wasn't exactly a school dress. It was more of a formal. Oh, well, pick up a few school dresses, too, while you're there. Oh, well, he... <laughs> <laughs> Never got such attention when I was poor. <laughs> All they love me for is my money. <laughs> Bertie, you haven't made any requests yet. Isn't there anything you need? Well, yes, it is one thing. I don't like to mention it. Name but... it, Bertie, and it's yours. Hang the expense. <laughs> well, sir, if you could fix the cord on, the cord on that electric, I'm going to fix the last two months. <laughs> oh, yes, that. If you could fix it so it don't spark at me every time I go touch it. Yes, I'll do better than that, Bertie. I'll get you a new iron. Well, it don't need a new iron, Mr. Gilfrey. It's just a cord. Now, if you could fix that so Forget I... the iron, Bertie. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get you a new washing machine. The doggondest washing machine you ever saw. With shock absorbers and a built-in radio. Well, that's fine, Mr. Gilfrey. <laughs> What am I going to iron with? It's all right. <laughs> uh, there's going to be a lot of changes around here, folks. Uh, you know, Marjorie, you were saying the other day we ought to fix this place up a little. Well, I may do that. Yeah, may do it. Might even sell this house and buy a newer one, a bigger one. Oh, um, uh, Uncle Darling. Yeah? Well, while we're on the subject, I seem to spend all my allowance. Yeah? Well, what would you suggest? It looks as if I have raised your allowance, don't it? No fair. Yours too, my boy. Oh, that's different. Yeah. My George, everybody's after my money, and I haven't even made it yet. But I will. You watch. And Mr. McGee. He will get his fair share, and not a cent more. <laughs> Who's going to be bought? Well, I'll be president, naturally. Who else? You don't think a little squirt like McGee could be just like him to try, though? <laughs> be just like McGee to. Well, by George, we'll settle that right at the start. McGee isn't going to pull anything like that on me. I'll see my lawyer. I'll go see him the first thing in the morning. Well, Gildy, glad you dropped in. Hang up your chair and take a hat. <laughs> No small talk, Judge. I'm in a hurry. I tried to line up a job for you this morning. I'm not interested. I spoke to Frank Babcock. I don't need you speaking to Frank Babcock or anybody else. I'm known in this town. All right, Gilly, all right. Sit down, won't you? I haven't got time to sit down. Do you know how to draw up a partnership contract? Sure I do. Any dumb lawyer can do that. Then I came to the right place. Let's get started. Just wait till I get the form. Who are you going in partner with, Gildy? Oh, a friend of mine from Whistle Vista, Silver McGee. Oh, yeah. I want you to draw up a partnership contract for me and McGee. Then I've got to find an office right away. All right. What line of business is it going to be? I don't know yet. Uh, not exactly. I'm expecting a letter this afternoon that will give all the details. All right. I'll leave that blank. How much money are you going to put into it? None of your business. I'm only asking as your lawyer. It's customary for each partner to put in so much money. I don't even know how much McGee's putting in yet. Leave that blank. All right. <laughs> Name the firm, McGee and Gildersleeve, or Gildersleeve and McGee? Uh, I like the second one better. But it's not perfect. Leave that blank. Uh, Judge, yeah. McGee's a pretty nice little fellow, you understand. Yeah. Clever inventor and all that, and I've known him a good long time. One of my best friends. Yeah. Uh, just the same, I wouldn't want him to have too much to say about the business. Can you fix that? I don't know, Gildy. A partnership is an equal proposition. I know, Horace, I know. But can't you slip in some little clause so that if it comes to a showdown, I'm the boss? No, Gildy, it can't be done. Some lawyer. All you know how to do is fill out forms. Well, what do you expect? You don't even know what business you're in. Listen, Judge, McGee has an invention. Now, what kind of an invention does a smart inventor make today? Turn if I know. Bang, 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 Judge. Oh. You think you might get some government contracts, Gildy? Do I? <laughs> That's why I need an office. Uh, you want a suite of offices? Possibly. Might need a whole building. Well, I don't know of any whole buildings that are available right now. Uh, might have to build, then. On this kind of thing, there wouldn't be any trouble with priorities, you understand? Yes, really. Yeah, there's a string of little stores down there next yeah, to the Wait a minute, Horace. To... Gives me an idea. Huh? Why not the Gildersleeve block? I'll occupy one building and we'll rent out the rest. Make a lot of money that way. I right, golly, I'll see if I can get you an option on that property this morning. Do that, Judge. Uh, say, I just thought of a name for the firm. 
Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve and Associates. Great! <laughs> All right, Horace, I'll be in touch with you. In the meantime, uh, keep this under your hat. Don't you worry, Gildy. Bang, bang, bang. Or possibly boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so long, <yeah. laughs> Uh oh, that may be the postman, Bertie. Postman don't ring, Miss Gilsey, but I'll go see. Maybe it's a registered letter. After all, it's important. Good afternoon, Bertie. Afternoon, Miss Ransom. Leela, she's heard I'm rich. Come in, Miss Ransom. You'll find Miss Gilsey in the park. Good afternoon, Trogmore. Uh, hello, Leela. I'm not a millionaire yet, you understand. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you must have heard. One of the children must have told you. Tell me what? I don't let this get around, Leela. But I expect to be a big manufacturer pretty soon. My little chum, Cooper McGee, has made an important invention. Oh, how exciting. What is it? Well, I can't tell you. It's kind of a military secret. But it's going to be very big. Oh, you'll be an important man now, won't you? Oh, I guess so. Yes, I presume so. Hmm. I suppose you'll forget all about the little girl that lives next door. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Even a tycoon, Leela. There's a time for work and a time for play. Let's play, Leela. <laughs> now, Clark, Martin, I declare you're there. Oh, I am not. I just stop Why should I stop it? It's all your fault. I never had such a thing in my life. What did I do? You left your ears sticking out. So through little little here. Oh, no. Get away from me, Clark. Uh, stop it, dear. Oh, uh, now, Leela, be reasonable. Uh-uh. Okay, you be quiet for a minute and I'll play for you. Play? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I know that. Someday I'll find you Moonlight behind you Through the dream I am dreaming As I draw near Smile, a little smile, for a little while, we shall stand hand in hand, I'll leave you never, love you forever. Uh, what's the matter? Drop, darling. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Well, none of that love stuff. Oh. I mean, we mustn't let this thing get serious. Mercy, who's getting serious? Not me, I assure you. Well, as long as that's understood. You know how it is with us, tycoons. (laughs) When we're working, we work hard. When we play, it's all play. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that. Yes, Leela, you don't understand. All I'm out for, Leela, is a good time. I'm no good. You're a cat. Yeah, I'm a cat. <laughs> a playboy. <laughs> well, nobody loves to play any more than I do. Great. Now, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gilfrey, here's huh? the mail. Mail? Yes, sir. The postman left it at the back door. Oh, thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, it's a letter from McGee. Oh. All about the invention. Mm. Let's see. Uh, dear Rocky. I sure was glad to hear you say you'd go partners with me on my invention. I believe you'll make a barrel of money out of it, and I'm glad you're in on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. The invention does not use any scarce materials. It can be made of plastics, which is very important. Also, there's a good chance the government will be interested. Uh After all, the Army and Navy need mouse traps just as much as... I might have known that's all he'd think of, a rat like McGee. Oh, I'm sorry if you're disappointed. (laughs) A millionaire and a pauper. Five minutes ago, I was wealthy. Now I'm just anybody. Middle age, looking for a job. Why to come down, Leela? Did you hear what I said, Leela? Of course I have. It doesn't make any difference to me, Frog Martin. Really, Leela? Of course not, Sidney. 
still the same man you were five minutes ago, aren't you? Sure, I, I guess so. And I'm the same girl. The kind of a girl who believes in sticking by a man when he's in trouble. Leela, maybe I was wrong. I was wrong. I was never cut out to be a playboy. Oh, rock, Mom. Yes, sir. A man should be serious about women. Women are a serious business. You think so? I sure do. Now, let's get down to business. <laughs> in just a few seconds. These days, we're all left to have our ups and downs trying to balance the family food budget. So it's wise to choose foods high in nutritional value, yet low in cash and ration point costs. Surely one such food is economical parquet margarine, the delicious, nourishing spread for bread that's made by Kraft. High in food energy value, fortified by Kraft, so that every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A, Parquet margarine is a downright economical aid to good family nutrition. Think of it. Parquet provides these important food elements, yet requires only two ration points a pound. And Parquet's fresh, delicate flavor is another fine aid to good nutrition. So to keep appetites up, to keep your food budget down, buy economical Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Remember, delicious, nourishing Parquet margarine is made by Kraft. <laughs> Poor old Gildersleeve, with a prop knocked out from under him by McGee's letter, and his castle of dreams tumbled about his ears, he faces at last life's stern reality. In desperation, he swallowed his pride and decided to follow up a lead on a job that Judge Hooker gave him. So we find him now entering Frank Babcock's hardware store. Well, madam, what can I do for you? Uh, excuse me, can you tell me what... Just a minute, I was here ahead of you. I know, I was just asking. Then don't try to jump in ahead. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't trying to buy anything, lady. I was merely asking the man where I can find a proprietor, Mr. Babcock. Frank? Oh, he's around somewhere. Oh, Frank! Some people have no manners. <laughs> I guess he's down in the cellar. Come this way, will you? Listen, you were waiting on me. I'll be right back, madam. Keep your bonnet on. <laughs> yeah, the old grouse. Oh, we get plenty of them. <laughs> hey, Frank! Frank, you down there? Yeah. Man up here, see this. Oh, what is it now? I'll be up. He'll be up. Uh, he'll be up. Thanks. <laughs> I wait. Uh, not much of a place he's got here. Have to be a lot of changes. It's like a junk shop. Oh, oh Mr. Babcock? Yeah. My name is Gildersleeve. Brockmorton P. Gildersleeve. How much are these discloths, please? Those, lady, those are 25 cents. 25 cents for a discloth? Of all the nerves. Well, there's a wall on, lady. That's the price. What can I do for you, bud? Uh, my name is Gildersleeve. I was told... Hey, Mark! Yeah? What's the price on these here nails? They're not marked. Oh, I'll make it ten cents. <laughs> now, is something you wanted? Well, I... <laughs> e God, I came over here because Judge Hooker told me that you were... Considering... Oh, you're the fella. Well, as I told the judge, I did have an opening. Can't get hardware now with the war, so I'm trying to build up the feed and fertilize the rim. Fertilize? <laughs> Yes. I needed a salesman with a car to go... Salesman? And... Yes, but I hired a fellow yesterday. Of course, maybe he won't work out. You might come back in a week. Yeah, and I might not. Good day, Mr. Babcock. <laughs> Why don't you clean up your store? <laughs> Something's bound to turn up. Yeah, but when? You have to cut down, that's all. I'll have to tell the kids. And Bertie. Uncle Mort, is that you? Uh, yes, it's me. Well, close your eyes before you come in. Huh? What for? Close them. All right, they're closed. Wait a minute, Miss Marjorie. Should I get it? What? Yes, what is this? <laughs> all right, you can look now. Surprise! Well, oh, my goodness, uh, that's uh, quite a dress. Well, don't you like it? Don't you think it's pretty? Oh, of course. Uh, you don't think it's too long, do you, Bertie? 
Yes, he is just right. I like it better than the other one. Other one? Well, of course, that's just for sportswear, really. If I can find a coat to go with it, I think it'll be very smart, though. Uh, Marjorie. Of course, this is the one I love. Marjorie, there's something I have to tell you. You too, Bertie. Yes, sir. And Leroy, where's he? Oh, he's around somewhere. Leroy! Uh, Leroy! For a minute, I want to talk to you. Okay, sure. But after we'll go down and see it, huh? I'm afraid not, my boy. Huh? I hate to disappoint you, Leroy. You too, my dear. But the fact is, I guess I was a little over enthusiastic about Mr. McGee's adventure. You mean we're not going to make a million dollars? I'm afraid not, my boy. Well, don't you care, Uncle Mort. We don't need a million dollars. Sure, what's the difference? As long as we're rich. <laughs> but we're not going to be rich. Leroy, I don't think you understand, my boy. This means no bicycle. No bicycle? I'm afraid not. We're going to have to cut down all around. Now, me, I'm giving up cigars. Mr. Gill, please? Yes, Bertie. I suppose this means I ain't never going to get that iron cord fixed. Bertie, I'll fix that iron cord this very evening, if not tomorrow morning. <laughs> now, my dear, that's a very pretty dress. And I'll, I'll send it back, Uncle Mort. I'll send both of them back. Well, now, I... I don't need any dresses. I've got plenty of dresses. I just bought them, that's all. I could choke that McGee. I'll wrap that up for you, Miss Marjorie. It's all right, Bertie. I can do it. I'm so right about the bike. I don't need a bike. I can walk to school. Well, that's very manly of you, my boy. I'm not like some kids. Scared to walk to school. I like to walk to school. I need any help that much. Oh, I can't stand this. Uh, I think I'll go for a little walk. Uh, be right back, folks. Where are you going, huh? Oh, just out of the corner for a cigar. <laughs> I, I thought you were giving up cigars. Uh, well, a very cheap cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have it in. The uh, usual, I suppose. No, I'm thinking of making a slight change. <laughs> Let me try one of those Florida New Westmacolas there, will you? The green one. <laughs> I hear they're very good. Well, they're uh, cheaper. I'll try one. Well, you're the customer. Thanks. <laughs> yes, uh, thanks. Yes, I... I had a little uh, disappointment today, Peavy. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, I... <laughs> yes, I... <laughs> 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 you say you had a disappointment, Mr. Jonas? Yeah, and the cigar is another one. <laughs> but I suppose I'll have to get used to them. Peavy, did you ever have a fellow you considered a friend? Did you ever have him call you up and tell you you had a great invention that was going to make you a pot full of money? Then when the letter came, it turned out to be nothing at all? Mm, no, Mr. Gallison, I can't say that I have. <laughs> well, that's what happened to me. Uh, would it be out of place to ask who was the friend? It was no friend, Peavy. It was Silver McGee. Oh, Mr. McGee, well, he seemed a very pleasant sort the only time he came in here. Those are the ones you can't trust, Peavy, the pleasant ones, the smiling ones. Why, McGee told me this invention would make us both a million dollars. And what did it turn out to be? A mousetrap, a plastic mousetrap, the most useless thing in the world. Yeah, I think they are. No, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. You may not be aware of it, Mr. Gildersleeve, but this country has quite a mouse problem today. Of course, they're keeping it quiet till after the election. (laughs) 
but it's maybe it's more serious than people know. Peavy, you're kidding. No, I'm, I'm not. I, I have a mouse problem right here in the shop. Why don't you keep a cat? I used to keep a cat, but I have to let him go. <laughs> he kept rubbing up against the electric eye there at the door and ringing the gong. <laughs> the darn thing drove me crazy. <laughs> I wish I had him back, though. I'd stuff cotton in my ears. Yeah, that's all right. Well, then, why don't you get some traps? Yeah, that's just it, Mr. Gildersleeve. There are no traps. No traps? There's no metal to mix them with. By George, I never thought of that. And no rat poison. The army's using all the chemicals. TV! Do you know what this means? It means the mice will be all over the place. <laughs> No, Peavy, it means the biggest potential market for mouse traps ever conceived in the history of mankind. Well, you know the old saying, build a better mouse trap. That's what we'll call it, Peavy. The better mouse trap company, Brock Morton P. Gildersleeve President. Why, we'll build them by the billions. We'll have a factory in every key city in the United States. We'll have a backlog of a million orders. Peavy, do you realize what this will do for humanity? Do you know there are mice like this minute carrying diseases nobody ever heard of? We'll wipe out whole plagues, McGee and I. And what's more, we'll make a million dollars. Give me another cigar, Peavy. And take this one out and bury it. <laughs> you want a better cigar, I think. The best you've got. Give me six. Oh, that's McGee. I always said he was a smart cookie. Oh, Leela. Hello, Frost Martin. Mr. Peavy. Bye, George. Really, you came at the right time. Sit down and have a soda. Heck, have a banana split. Have one yourself, Peavy. Uh, oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> and not for me, Mr. Frost Martin, trying to my figure. But I would have a lemonade. A lemonade for a lady, Peavy. With two straws. Why, Charles, Mom, I don't know whatever's come over you. You better look out for me, Leela. I'm a cad again. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, don't let all the loose talk you've heard here tonight fool you. The world of the plastic mouse trap and the deep freeze and the electronic cooker may be just around the corner, but it's not here yet. We still have a war on our hands, and one of our greatest dangers is still inflation. It will continue to be a danger until our industries are back on full-time production of all the new things we'd like to buy. And that won't be until after Nimitz and MacArthur have taken Tokyo. Now, you've got to look at it this way. If the cost of living is allowed to go up, the people who will be the hardest hit will be the wives and the families of the men in service who are living on fixed allotments and not very large ones. So let's not ask for higher wages or raise the prices of the things we have to sell till the war is won and things are back to normal. Victory is coming, but it's not here yet. If we break ranks now, we can still lose this war at home just as surely as if our men deserted at the front. They won't. Will we? Good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>